All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to Akuma's Arsenal, and today we are reviewing. Not really reviewing. We're just taking a, a look at Damien, uh, Damien's watch collection. Now, Damien is a, a pretty cool guy. He lives out in Poland. Um, well, how we all started off was, I think he was just. I can't remember. I think he just hit me up on Facebook one time, and what were we talking about? Let's take a look here. Oh, he, he was asking me a question about the Vostok. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how we all how we kind of hit it off, right? So after he asked me the question, I answered it. We started talking about watches and started asking like you know, uh, watch collection stuff, and um, we were talked about politics for a little bit. And after a little while, we we're like, hey, you know, shoot me your collection. I'd be down to, to make a video about it. And he sent me it, and I was not disappointed. Now. My first impressions was, my initial thoughts were, this is a dope collection. Uh, it's He has a taste that is obviously very, very different than mine. I could, If I was a snob, I could totally see how I'd look down on his collection. However, you know, every single little piece does serve a function. Every little piece is inexpensive. Every single piece has a nice flair to it. And um, I really, really do like it. Now, let's get on to the video. So what I'm doing here is I'm just, I set up all of, uh, Damien sent me some uh, videos of his watches and I'm just going to watch over it and just relay my thoughts. I took notes and a bunch of other stuff, but yeah, let's get started. It looks nice in that watch box, definitely. So first off, he's got, what is this? I wrote down to the notes. Casio, what is it? It's a Casio MTF E001. And uh, initially it kind of reminds me of um, the Rolex Explorer. Ooh, in-directional, bi-directional bezel. That's a pretty cool piece. Yeah, man, wow. It kind of it does, it kind of looks like a, kind of like if AP and uh, G-Shock had a little baby. <laughs> Cool. 100 meters of water resistance. Pretty big looking. He, I, when he was sending me this, he took, he called it his EDC watch, which I think is pretty pretty cool. You know, I, I've had a bunch of Casios, I've had a bunch of G-Shocks. This one I've never seen before, but it, it's pretty dang cool. It looks like an Explorer. It kind of looks like the Sarg, the Seikos. I like that orange hand. Very visible. Looks really really good. The bi-directional is a compass. Let's see the wrist shot. That is a big watch. Luckily, I think Damien has pretty big wrists, but yeah, that's a pretty big watch. Looks good on him, though. By the way, Damien is a chemical engineer. I think he works in, like, plastics and stuff, so that's super duper duper cool. Alright, that's the Casio. Gone. <laughs> Next, we have up the Timex. Expedition. So this one is the model number. Tell it's called the Field Shock TW4B011 1000. Right. It's also 100 meters water resistant, and of course, it's a quartz. Looks like a damn tank. You know, my mom for Christmas about a year ago, last Christmas, uh, not this last last Christmas, but you know, a couple like a year ago, um, she got me a, pr a pretty big uh, G-Shock and looked very, very, very similar to that. Not my cup of tea, I would never rock it, but, you know, if you're in, if you, you can probably go swimming, you can take it around, you can beat it up, you, you can get in a fight, you can, you know, these two watches are, they're, they're tough boys. That's cool. It looks like it has a bi-directional bezel. I think it does, so it kind of, it kind of has like dive watch vibes to it, but it really, in all honesty, it's just one of those like, Tough ass G Shock esque watches made by Timex. And actually, I have a vintage Timex in here, and just like comparing the two is insane. Like they're so different. Where is it? Where are you, old son? Ah, well, there I go. It's the one downside of having a messy desk, but I'll put a picture up of the vintage Timex that I have on me right now. Crazy the difference. Next here we have the Casio Alarm Chrono. Now this is cool. This is a cool piece. I actually ha gave one of these to my girlfriend. 
and she loves it. Um, I, I have had Casey up 91 W's before, and this is just a super duper dope watch for just like 10 bucks. You know, I, I love it. Uh, it's, it's an amazing watch. It's the only one that Damien has that I've ever handled, and I, it's a great watch. Perfect for like a child or someone who doesn't want a, an analog wrist watch or someone who just wants something, you know, a nice watch that they can just strap on and not have to worry about it. Super duper easy to adjust. I gotta say, I love this Casio. I think it's the AH186W. I'll put something up on there for you guys. But I, I love this watch. Absolutely love it. Good, good taste, Damien. I really, really do. One thing that I will mention. Of course, it's made cheaply. Of course, it's a ten dollar watch. But um, that cheap kind of feeling adds to the charm. Let's see the wrist shot. Ah, oh, that looks good on Damien. Definitely. Damn, that looks good. By the way, it has this kind of cool adjusting thing on the uh, strap. It uh, kind of uh, it's kind of, like it slides. You know, it's very very different than any other bracelet I've had. What's up next here? The Loris. So I looked up uh, some stuff about Loris. I couldn't find Jack Squat. I'm pretty sure that they make they. I, all I could find was a bunch of cheap like thirty dollar chronographs that were actually mechanical. But uh, one was like Turbion. It was like thirty bucks. So Loris, not the most prestigious brand in the world at all. Actually, I would say that it's what's opposite of prestigious. The opposite of prestigious, right? But hey, you know, not my cup of tea, personally. I don't really like it. But who cares, dude? It's your collection, you know, do your thing. It does have, kind of have like a nice, um, you know, it's, it's rectangular. It's, it has a unique shape to it. I kind of like it. It's really big for a dress watch. And it has like 24 millimeter uh, spring bars. You know, it kind of reminds me of, um, kind of looks like something that, oh, that's a really thick strap, god damn. Kind of looks like a, a pilot's watch. That with that big strap on it, or the, like kind of how my Vostok looked with its extra strap on. Now this is one that I really, 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 really like, really like. This is his Orient Multi Date Perpetual Calendar. Oh, this is such a dope watch, dude. This is amazing taste. Ah, oh, I really, really do love it. Made by Orient in house, completely in house. Um, just, it just, it, it looks so beautiful. This version looks a lot like the Citizen Nighthawk that my young has. Um, I don't know what those pusher, the top pusher is for, but it just looks damn lovely. You can find vintage ones. You can find ones in other colors, green, white. Oh, I love that multi perpetual calendar. Stunning piece. Very, very good taste. And here's his Jaragar. It's. I'm not exactly for sure. I did a little bit of preliminary research, and I'm gonna. My my. I think it's Chinese made. Um, so not the most prestigious movement. Uh, Jaragar, not a very well known company. Let's see. Let's check out that the back. Very ugly movement, but it's an open display back. Let's see that move. Yeah, looks. It's an ugly movement, but you know all movements are freaking beautiful. So it is. Oh. That's nice. It's, I love seeing watches tick. I wonder what it looks like, if you can see any difference between the, uh, when the chronograph is running. Very interesting. But ugly, I just mean, you know, no really any decorations, just plated steel. A lot, very, very, very similar to a lot of the Seikos that I have. Very, very similar. <clears throat> now my, actually, you know, this one is kind of my cup of tea. I do like the Arabic numerals. It is a chronograph. It is mechanical. I like the leather strap on it. It, it kind of, I bet, kind of doubles as your um, your dress watch. Uh, I'm in the middle of the road about that one, you know. I'm in the middle of the road. Can't. You know, I, do I like it? Do I not like it? No say. No say. So, what am I? Some of my thoughts about your, uh, your about your collection, Damien. Well, at first glance, it seems like. At very first glance, without any like real like looking at the watches, first glance it just looks like some dudes got like a bunch of like twenty thirty dollar watches. At very first glance, but you know, you take a look at all the different pieces, and it's that is really not the case at all. Um, you have a lot of variety in your watch collection. Um, Damien, 
you obviously collect low end pieces. Um, but honestly, nowadays all watches are luxuries, so who cares? Um, it's very, very. Your tastes are very different than mine. Mine, I like to focus on design. I like to focus on a lot of different things. But for yours, I can't really get a, a good uh, just perception about your watch collection, like your tastes. Um, it seems like you kind of like things that are kind of big, you know, a little bit ostentatious. Um, it is in its own way refined. If I saw you wearing one of these watches individually, except for maybe the Casio and the AH1, like for example, if I saw you, if I saw you wearing the Loris, if I saw you on the bus wearing the Loris, I wouldn't think you're a watch guy. Honestly. I really wouldn't. But, obviously you are. Obviously you know your stuff, Damien. He's also looking at picking up a Komandierski. Komandierski! And, or a Vostok. So, he was asking me some questions about uh, the Vostok. Like, which one? He was asking me, hey, which one do you think I should get? I said the Komandierski, but you know, just because the Vostok... Uh, but the only downside is that the vo changing the movements on Vostok don't have a quick set, quick set on the date, so that's super duper duper annoying. Damon, you obviously have good taste, except there are watches in your collection that I don't like, and that's completely okay. I don't like the Loris, and I don't like the, um... I don't like the uh, EDC watches. Yeah, ooh, I don't like them. You know, for me, my EDC watch is... For example, my S and DC eighty one or my SKX. That's just how my lifestyle is. I don't need to watch that tough. I, I exercise. I get. I you know. I I wrestle with my brother. I you know. I'm not. I'm not up here just sitting on my ass like sitting on a computer all day. <laughs> Except that's seems to be the the case too often. Uh, I feel. I don't feel the necessary to have watched that tough. But you know who knows. You know my general thoughts about the collection. Damien, I think your collection's dope. Um, I think you did a really, really good job curating. Uh, you have so many different styles. You have chronographs, you have dress watches, you have EDC watches. You do have an EDC kind of uh, dive watch, and you're looking at getting a Komandierski or you're getting a Vostok. I mean, you're set. Like, you're, you're a grown-ass man with refined taste, tastes. Like, there's no doubt about that. You did a really, really good job, uh, you know, picking all the different things you know for me I, I never knew that there were uh, mechanical chronographs under you know for 20 30 dollars I really did not know that um, you know I mean I'm not I don't know how much the uh, the Jerigar is but I'm talking about the Loris I know Loris makes uh, chronographs like that um, what else like, I wrote some stuff down but you, just researching uh, a lot of the watches you know I it made me kind of you know, whoa, you know, it made me learn a thing or two. That Orient Perpetual Calendar, I really did not know about that before uh, you sent me your collection. I've had Orients in the past, I've had Ma a Mako. Oh, that's it, just a Mako. But you know, I, I, I am a fan of Orient. I, I really do like Orient, and that Perpetual Calendar is really, 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 really filthy. Um, for me personally, that's the pick of the bunch. You know, if I had that one watch, the only problem for me is that's 42 millimeters, so it's a little bit big, but that's a dope, 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 dope piece, dude. I love that perpetual calendar. Um, you know, keep keep me updated on what happens with your uh, Komandierski or the Vostok. It's funny because you're Polish and you're buying Russian watches. The Soviet Union watches, you know. <laughs> Just, I'm a history nerd, so sorry about that if that was a distasteful joke. Um, what would I recommend? Uh, check out some, like, vintage pieces, you know. Uh, you can... I know that a lot of your watches are low end, right? And you can get a bunch of vintage pieces for under 50 bucks. Personally, like, I got the uh, vintage Vostok. This was $45 plus shipping, but this is from Ukraine, right? Shipping from Ukraine to the United States costs like, what? It cost me 15 bucks, but Ukraine to Poland? Probably not that much. So, you know, check out uh, vintage Vostoks, right? Because the shipping cost might be way better. Honestly, all shipping costs are probably better for you. All the European stuff. You probably will end up getting a Vostok. So that's a really, really... I can definitely see a Vostok in your collection. I'm, I'm super duper curious to see what, uh, what like, 
you know, what 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 people kind of watches people wear where you live, you know, in Poland. I don't know exactly where you live in Poland, but let's just say you live in Warsaw, for example. I would, I bet it'd be super duper interesting to check out people kind of watches people wear in Warsaw. That'd be, that'd be really really cool. Um, I think also you should another thing that you should check out is uh, this is I'm not just saying this for you. I'm just for people who collect low end stuff, like some cool stuff that you should check out. A vintage Seiko. This is the 702 that uh, TGV has lent me. Check check uh, vintage Seiko out. Watch out for the stuff from India. I'm I I mean I I like the stuff from India personally, but I'm most people don't, so you probably won't. But yeah, check out the stuff. Uh, check out vintage Seiko. Also with vintage Timex, that'd make a little good companion for your uh, for your Max uh, your uh, field watch. But yeah, check out vintage Seiko. Um, I'm, in general, just take a, check out some vintage stuff. I think the Vostok is a really, really good choice for your collection. I'm kind of curious to see how many watches. Are you going to keep it at six? Are you going to go higher? Are you going to go lower? Are you going to get any high-end pieces? I'm super duper duper curious, Damien. Um, I really also really, really do like the, that Casio. Oh, I just That's such a cool watch. I remember, how, I remember how earlier I was saying that I got one for my girlfriend. She loves it. Um, it's so crazy that, you know, Damien, you can enjoy a Casio uh, alarm chronograph, and my girlfriend can, you know, it's it's like a watch for everybody, and I, I think that's a super duper dope watch. Um, in general, dope collection, Damien. Uh, keep up the good work with what you do in, uh, in Poland with your chemical engineering. Feel free to hit me up whenever you want. Uh, we can talk watches or whatever, and if I ever stop by Poland, I'll be sure to hit you up. Uh, and everyone else watching the video, thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys ever want to send me your collection, send it to me at akumazarsenal.com. Uh, I'd be super duper down to check it out. Um, <laughs> yeah, the only thing is is that uh, I don't speak Mandarin, so... <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> thanks for watching the video, and akuma out. <laughs>